All right. Welcome to the, well, not the Network Chuck podcast anymore. We're calling it the Noobs podcast. Episode one of the Noobs podcast. Episode 001. <laughs> um, now, if you saw my last video, this guy, mm-hmm. he's uh, a new guy. Who are you? Uh, I am Cameron. I am Chuck's brother. Hopefully you've seen me before, but if you haven't uh, and this is your first time, thanks for tuning in. Glad to have you guys here. He's not drinking coffee. He's drinking tea, in case you're wondering. And that's why he's not as excited as I am. Anyway, so today, again, episode 001. Cameron and I, we're going to get more into hacking in 2022. Like, we really want to do it. Um, but you know what? We're still noobs. That's just, that's just how it is. Like, we we don't devote a ton of time to studying, and we really want to take it seriously this year, right? Yeah, Like We want to buckle down and figure out the best path, and hopefully, hopefully you guys can kind of learn along with us and go along the same path. So anyways, today on the podcast, on the noobs podcast, the best person in the world we could think to bring on <laughs> for episode one, Mr. John Hammond. Uh, go ahead and get him on the screen, Austin. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hi, John. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. It's good to be here. Oh, absolutely. Now, John, before you introduce yourself, we already did that for you with a really slick video. So uh, go ahead and play that for us, Austin. Uh oh. The illustrious John Hammond. Okay, so <laughs> real quick, for those of you who don't know about John Hammond, first of all, where you been? And this is a great introduction to hacking, because if you don't know who John Hammond is, you're definitely a noob. John, who are you? Well, hey, yeah. Hello, my name is John Hammond. Um, I'm a cybersecurity researcher. Uh, I don't know, someone that tries to do education and training and content. Uh, I'm, I, I just like computers. I just like technology. I just like hacking and cybersecurity. Um, I do it as a day job, and I do kind of a YouTube thing off on the side. Uh, I try to host a lot of Capture the Flag competitions. I try to offer training and do talks and presentations and webinars and podcasts and live streams just like this to bring education to people and get folks in the know in cybersecurity. <laughs> so you are definitely selling yourself short. Um, I know that's, <laughs> you rattled off a lot there, but first of all, real quick, and th- this might take a minute. So if you guys need a coffee break, take one. Tell me what certifications you have just in the hacking space. <laughs> Send this to me already? <laughs> <laughs> well, I want people to know, like, what are, like it's, it's not Ed Sheeran here. <laughs> it's, it's actually someone better. <laughs> We've already had a few comments there. Hey, look, it's Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Yeah, certifications, what you got? Okay, so I am in the double digits, and I'll be fully upright with that and transparent. I'm, I, I think it it is a baker's dozen. It might even be more baker's dozen being 13. Uh, but let's see if I can remember them all. <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> E- e-learn security side, EJPT, ECPPT, uh, offensive security side, OSCP, OSCE, when that was a thing, OSED, OSWE, OSEP, uh, and I think I already covered the other one. They're new stuff I haven't jumped into yet. So the uh, PCAP for Python programming, LFS for Linux file system stuff, uh, Security Plus way back when, um, CEH way back when, uh, did the... What? PNPT, the Cyber Entropy P- Dimes thing. Uh, there, I'm, I'm totally missing another one. But, but yes, we made it, at, at least to the double digits. <laughs> so that's a little insane. Um, I've never had double digit certifications in my life. Um, so I just want people to know, like, we're, we're dealing with someone who you pretty much tried everything in the hacking education space. Like, you know what's out there. You know what... Um, what's good, what's bad, and probably what's the be- what the best path is for someone just getting started or trying to figure this journey out. So that's what we're dealing with here. So I'm just going to jump right into it. We're going to talk about some exploits later, um, some of the big Linux things going on. We'll pick your brain on some things about, about the, the, the kind of what's going on with the industry and um, also about your, uh, your YouTube exploits. <laughs> YouTube exploits. And what, <laughs> and what you're doing with that, because I, I think what you do is amazing. You, you hit deeper stuff than I do, and I wish I could do what you do. I can't. So if you haven't subscribed to John Hammond, you're an idiot. Go subscribe right now. Just kidding. I love you, but still go subscribe <laughs> to John Hammond. So real quick, John. Now, I've been doing hacking on and off for a little bit, but I'm still a noob very much so. Cameron, he knows nothing. Nothing. He's a little swaddling baby. So <laughs> what what does he need to do right now to get started to even like consider getting on the path of John Hammond? Ooh, super good question. Uh, There are a lot of different ways to take it. 
And truthfully, it varies for everyone. And honestly, my answer to this question changes a lot over time uh, because it varies. It's kind of what you already know or where you might want to start with, et cetera. Uh, but I think there are a couple core competencies and some that you probably already have, uh, Cameron, because I know, hey, you've been burning through some certifications. You're checking out all the good, good content here on YouTube. Um, so Linux is absolute necessity. Uh, and Python is one absolute necessity in my mind. Uh, and the Linux being an operating system, right? Linux being a lot like Windows, kind of a different variation for free, open source software, uh, much more fine-tuned and tailored for developers, for programming, for coding. And you might say, it's a good question that comes following that. Like, hey, do I have to be a programmer if I want to be a hacker? Yeah, like how, how deep do we have to go with Python? Like, it's like, if you think, have you ever used Codecademy, that website that teach? So like, um, they have their like Python one, Mm -hmm. And they take you all the way to like learning how to use functions and um, how, what's the last thing they teach you? Like, is it, I forget. I think it's classes. Classes. They, the they, they go all go the way into. to classes and learning everything before that. So do you need to go much more beyond that or do you have to go a bit deeper? So you don't need to go much further beyond that. When people ask the question, do I need to learn programming or coding to be a hacker? I always say no, but with an asterisk, like with a little with a disclaimer and a footnote that like, you should learn some programming and coding and scripting, but you don't need to learn absolutely everything. You don't need to master every single language. You don't need to build the next great app or anything fancy. I am not by any means like a software engineer or architect. I, I can't do that. I can't make a giant, hey, supports millions of users, program an application, but I can script. Like I, I, can, I can write a loop that might brute force passwords Right or, or might try all the different potential characters that might hey cause some sort of blind SQL vulnerability or inject to happen, uh, and you don't need to learn you don't need to know a whole lot of hardcore complex programming concepts for that. You just need to know the basic concepts. What's a variable? What's a function? How can I figure this conditional loop into something else? Those are the things that take a lot of practice, but I don't think there's any better way to do it than trying to do it trying to hack, trying to work on some projects, <laughs> trying to, you know, fire off some exploits. Now, as far as Linux is concerned, what do you recommend is the best uh, distro to use to learn? Ooh, that is a heated debate, my friend. Uh, <laughs> it's an interesting can of worms because a lot of folks, it, folks might say, hey, fire up Kali Linux and then you're a hacker, right? Which is... You are, right? Yeah. That's how that works. <laughs> That's what I've been telling people. <laughs> so... I actually really like this perspective, and it's a really cool talking point. Uh, Kali Linux is a Linux distribution that is loaded up with security testing tools and programs and applications that make your life easier if you want to be a hacker, if you want to be a penetration tester, if you want to do bug bounty, if you're going to capture the flag, all that stuff. It's nice that it's all ready and there for you. And that's a good thing. That helps you learn right away how to use those tools and how to do those things. But... Uh, I f tend to use Ubuntu, like Ubuntu Linux. And some folks might mm. see that in videos and some folks might even ask like, hey, John, why are you using Ubuntu when you aren't, could have been using Kali or Parrot OS or distribution? Or Black Arch. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> why aren't you I running build your own? <laughs> <laughs> I think... So, oh, sorry. Uh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I think it's really valuable to learn how to install those tools and learn how to configure those tools and watch and see them break because then you'll be able to figure out how to fix them and you'll be able to troubleshoot and understand, oh, what are the packages? What are the repositories? How does this all work within Linux? Uh, so maybe a little bit of banging your head against the wall, trying to get things together in Ubuntu is still really worthwhile for your own learning and your own growth. Yeah, I definitely think I've ran into that a lot where you get something like Parrot or Kali, and it's like, here's what you use for hacking. Here's all these tools, and you're like, all right, now what do I do? Because mm -hmm. you have it's, it's like sensory overload with everything they do provide in those distros. Yeah, I, I will have to say that I, I enjoy using Kali, and once you, once I know what tools I need to use normally, I'm like, okay, that's gonna be in Kali. I'll just spin up Kali real quick. But going through and like setting up my own Ubuntu and going, oh, like I need to install this from Git, or I need to you know install this via APT. Doing that is part of the learning process and I don't think people should skip that that is essential yeah it's it's amazing how much 
I mean, because, okay, let's talk about this real quick. So you mentioned like, okay, getting into hacking some prereqs, Linux and Python. Even some people right now are like, bro, I, I can barely turn on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what, what do I need before that? Would you say like a, a help desk level of knowledge would be good enough to start taking that journey? What, what, do, you, what do you think someone needs? Because like, I know, man, I, I get people all the time who just, they, they don't even have a help desk level knowledge. They're like, oh, I want to get into hacking. And they're like, man, I, you said Linux and I had to Google that. So <laughs> what, 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 do you, what do you think is the prerequisite knowledge to even start that, that journey that you're mentioning? Ooh, An another good uh, conversation there because I. Oh, uh, we're gonna hit you up. We're, yeah. we're, gonna, we're gonna knock you out here. <laughs> so, I know there is a approach to getting into infosec or getting into cybersecurity, right? Um, and some folks say, like, "Hey, you know, I, I I climbed the ladder. I started at this help desk job. I got into this IT network engineer, and then I got into this hey junior penetration tester role, and now I'm like top dog. Now I'm running the team." Yes, that is that is a way to do it. That is absolutely a path. And I agree. And I honor and respect that. At the same time, I think there is a lot of value in you going after the things that you want to do and you're interested in. So to answer your real question there, what about the prerequisites for even, hey, I don't know the difference between a mouse and a keyboard. <laughs> Google. Yeah, as you mentioned. And knowing how to use a computer, knowing how to navigate, knowing how to use those keyboard shortcuts to make your life easier, knowing how to, I, I said Google and research, but I don't know, knowing the parts of the computer, knowing networking, knowing, hey, this is an IP address, this is a subnet, this is a blah, blah, blah. I think you don't need to suffer through the textbooks to do that at the very start. Uh, I think if you are just really fascinated and interesting in ethical hacking, then that knowledge will come. It'll, it'll come slowly if you don't get that, hey, sit through the textbooks and drone through the lectures, but mm -hmm. it will happen. I, I, I'd be interested in your take there, Network Chuck and, and Cameron, if I could. Like, you guys obviously both come from a networking background. Has that helped you in what you're learning and hacking? Is that totally cool for me to ask? Oh, yeah, completely. Yeah, I so, so. I, yeah, I will say that um, knowing networking, like, mm -hmm. holy crap, yeah. Like, a lot of the networking attacks, I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I know how that's working. Like, TCP, man in the middle. Yeah, I got this. I, I, I can cover that. It's when we start using the tools and, like, manipulating things and, like, um, just doing these random things I didn't, I didn't even know were possible. Because it is it is a different mindset coming from the building, the securing, yeah. the fixing, than going to, like, oh, how do we break that? That's that's really – and that's one of the reasons I wanted to get into hacking. I'm like, this is this is really fun. And, it's, and, and hacking is almost, the entire industry is almost gamified, which I love. I, I love that mentality. But yeah, knowing hacking or know, knowing networking definitely helps. I'm, Cameron, you're just now starting. So how has your networking and even cloud knowledge helped you kind of along the way? Yeah, it's definitely helped a lot. I Before I was doing anything cloud related, I knew nothing about like, like Windows Server or Linux Server administration. So learning Linux skills and learning Windows skills in more depth has really helped a lot. But definitely when I first looked at it, I think one of the first things I was going through try hack me. One of the first things they send you through is like network fundamentals, which I think is <laughs> they're really really easy because <laughs> well I would hope so. <laughs> he has a CCNA. <laughs> Actually, your CCNA just expired, didn't it? Yeah, in June. You gonna renew? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, John. I, I guess that's the next question. Is um, I mean, have you did you ever get your CCNA? I mean, you probably just woke up with your OSCP in your in, in the crib. <laughs> No, uh, I'll be honest. I, I wish I had more of that networking, like fund, like the foundation really there. I don't have my CCNA. I don't have, I don't even know the acronyms. I'll be honest. I don't know the CCIE, the, the CCENT back you mentioned. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that one died a long time yeah. ago. No, yeah. So, okay. Interesting. Interesting. So what, you know, I guess what, what would help me and maybe, maybe those out there is let's, let's dive into John's history. John, how did, cause like you're, you're not an old guy. Like, how old are you? Well, if you don't mind answering, how, if you don't mind doxing yourself, how old are you? Yeah, if I'm not already a, a walking dox, th this should stay on the Network Chuck channel. So all you John Hammond viewers, don't go tell other people. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 25. So. 25. 25. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'll, I'll dox myself with you so you're not alone. I'm 32. And um, 
you are so far ahead of the game and stupid. So I want to know the path you took, and 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 I guess even diving deeper, what drove you? And because like I, I've seen pictures of you when you looked like you were you just left the lunchroom in school and you went to a CTF and were like the boss. So <laughs> what? How how did this even happen? Where, where did you start, and what drove you to keep going like this? So can I tell the long story? Is that okay? And you guys can like speed run me or like, hey, John, hurry up if I'm if I'm taking too long. Is that all right? Oh yeah, we'll, 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 a little tell, bit. we'll tell you. We'll tell you when you're boring. Don't worry. <laughs> I was a kiddo, right? <laughs> uh, one time at band camp. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I wanted to go to school and I wanted to go to college and I wanted to do cool tech stuff. You know how every kid says, I want to make video games or I want to be a hacker. Uh, oftentimes and at least in my case, the school, the high school that I went to didn't have a curriculum or a program for that thing. Uh, and this was a, annoying. Uh, and then I thought, all right, well, what about college? Maybe I'll find that for undergrad for my education that I'm in the funnel and people say that kids are supposed to do that. So I guess I'll go do that. But I didn't want to have to pay for it. I don't like having looming debt and all that. Uh, I don't like mm -hmm. money. So I thought, you know what, let's go to one of the military service academies, one of the United States, like, hey, armed forces, Navy, uh, Air Force, Coast Guard, any of those. And I tried to apply to all those. I wanted to go to the Air Force Academy. I wanted to go to the Naval Academy. I wanted to go to West Point, Coast Guard. I actually got some nominations for Navy and Air Force, which I was super, super happy about. But they didn't wow. say yes. Uh, Coast Guard said yes. Now... Coast Guard is a, maybe not as far ahead in cybersecurity as is Air Force or Army. Is that fair to say? I don't think I'm getting anyone too upset. <laughs> uh, so Coast Guard didn't have a computer science program or major or study. They didn't have a cybersecurity program or anything to study that. So I was, again, in that problem where, dang, we just don't have the resources and material ready. And it's not easy for us to latch onto it and play. So at that point, you already knew you wanted to become like something in the cybersecurity realm? Yeah. So I grew up uh, and, and was into more of the creating and building mindset. I asked for my I asked like for my birthday when I turned 10 or something. I told my dad, dude, I want a website because I thought it was cool. <laughs> so he taught me <laughs> HTML. He taught me CSS. Uh, and I thought, sweet. Now I can have a website. Uh, Is your dad a developer? Then, so my dad is actually a network engineer, actually, and system administrator. Wow, okay. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, so was our dad. So our dad is a system admin, mm -hmm. more focused on VMware stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of just bleeds into your life. Yeah. Uh, but I knew... Anyways, continue. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, so no, I'm sorry. I knew, hey, once I had a website, dad, now I have to have a server. So he got me this, like, old school, uh, like, Turbo Linux, Dell, ancient dinosaur. Uh, and it was cool. And it was fun. And that was, that's what started the snowball of like learning HTML, learning programming, learning Linux. But it was never in the sense of security. It wasn't until I got into the Coast Guard and the military aspect that it turned not to, not to just building things, but breaking things. Um, mm. So there was a competition. There was an event. There was a, a sport, so to say, uh, like an Olympic style event of hacking. For across all the different service academies. And it was like, hey, we'll test the cadets and midshipmen how good they are at web application security or how good they are at cryptography or forensics or binary exploitation and stuff like that. And I didn't know it at the time, but I was going to go play and participate in this thing. Uh, it was really cool. We all got to go to like Philadelphia or something. I don't know. It was where they filmed Silence of the Lambs, which is a weird fun fact. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and we played in this competition, which I now know was a capture the flag event. Uh, and we were at the bottom of the scoreboard because we were completely new to this. We were mm. the under. You were noobs. Yeah, <laughs> we were noobs. <laughs> and I don't know that. The people that were hosting the event were the team from For All Secure um, and the folks that are part of the Plaid Parliament of Poning Capture the Flag team. So for folks in the audience that might know and perk up at that name, that's like the number one team in the consistently winning DEF CON, the World Series of Hacking. Uh, and I was standing in front of and having dinner with Tyler Nicewander, who's like, God among men, wizard in cybersecurity and capture the flag. And I had no idea. But I asked him, how do I get better at this. 
Can you so say? Real, real quick, so I, I'm going to interrupt you here. I'm going to stop here. So I, I first I want to comment on the fact that hacking's amazing. Like th- just the fact that there's competitions where like you can be on a team, kind of like gaming, and mm-hmm. and and compete with your knowledge that also translates to a career with money is insane. I mean, they. I didn't know this was a thing. Like when I became a help desk engineer, then a system admin, then a, then a network engineer. I mean, first of all, there's no competitions. Like that's not. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like, okay, this is boring. I mean, it's. I so still I love network engineering, but I'm not like competing. Which, by the way, they should have that, but I don't think it's popular <laughs> enough to have that. Um, because it's all going to the cloud anyway. But seriously, that's amazing. I never knew about that. So real quick, just for people who don't know what a CTF is, because like. Man, that, that's that's a weird thing. Like capture the flag, they know what that is. Like they play, play Call of Duty or whatever, and that's that's like a, a, one of the maps. What is it in the hacking realm? Yeah, thank you for for keeping me honest there. I know I was just kind of steamrolling without explaining that one. So a capture the flag is a game. Uh, it is a sport. It is a competition, but it's not a real world sport. Uh, you're kind of sitting at your keyboard and typing away and solving problems within cybersecurity. Like, hey, can I break into this website? Uh, And when they say capture the flag, they mean some sort of key or some sort of token that is the flag, that is the reward that you use as proof that you accomplished this task. Hey, I broke the cryptography. I hacked into this website. I found the secret sensitive information. And here is my token to prove that I have accomplished that. The more of those flags you capture, the more points you get, and there's a leaderboard. There's a scoreboard keeping track of, hey, who's doing what, who's winning, and you can benchmark your progress against everyone else playing. So you have a lot of fun with that because it has a little competitive edge, and you're learning. Like you're trying to learn new technology or see new software stack or things that you haven't been familiar with before. So that's the love and lore of Capture the Flag. (laughs) Which is still, it's amazing to me that's a thing, and mm-hmm. I, I love that, which is why I, I, I steer more people towards that, because it's, it's such an amazing opportunity. Um, but anyways, people are getting mad that I interrupted your story, so <laughs> pick back up where you, you met the most famous CTF hacker in the world and go from there. <laughs> so I, the gist of that was that we sucked. We were at the bottom. <laughs> uh, and it was like, man, I want to get better. Like This was so cool. How do I improve? Because... I'm in a spot where I don't have the resources, but I don't have like, you know, the formal education in academia wasn't bolstering me up the way that I was hoping for. So when I asked the, these people, they said like, go online and you'll find stuff like ctftime.org. Uh, you'll see things like smash the stack or ring zero, or you'll see things like over the wire, um, try hack me and hack the box, which came later now. But what we learned are war games. We're like always on cyber ranges where you can practice. Uh, and you've showcased these before, and uh, Chuck and Cameron on, on your stuff. Hey, you're working through a hack the box thing or you're playing and try hack me. And that gives you that practice. It might not be, hey, there's a goal and prize for a weekend competition. It's not a vanilla and cookie cutter capture the flag, but it's an always on game that you can sharpen your skills with. And in academia, I had the time to stay up late and <laughs> avoid obligations. Uh, and I would grind on capture the flag and war games and stuff like that. Just try and practice, just try and learn. And it was fun. And that's what kept me going. So would you say that you learned more from doing this than like a, I don't know if you, you said you got your degree. Was it in like, it's just like a, a normal comp side degree and not like cybersecurity angled or anything? Yeah, so I I studied um, electrical engineering because that was the closest thing they had. But it was like systems and signals, uh, nothing that I use in my actual life. (laughs) And and you finished that degree, I assume. So I got, it's a funny story, can of worms. I got to the fourth year uh, and it was a week before graduation and slipped away. Didn't graduate. Uh, But four years of education, so undergrad, whatever. (laughs) Nice. So I, I guess, so I, I assume, I assume that you were learning more from the CTFs than you were in your classroom or probably any classroom you've been in before, just because you were, you were learning and, and doing and, and, and hitting walls, but getting past those. I assume that's the process, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and I know sometimes that's kind of a hard pill to swallow. Like we'd like the easy button, but no, I, I, I learned more out of the classroom than I did in the classroom. Just me personally. So. 
So, okay, so we're, we're, we're going through the history of John Hammond. Now, real quick, guys, just so you know, this live stream will be saved. We're going to have that in a nice edited format on the Noobs YouTube channel. I'm just still growing and building up, so if you want to subscribe to that, go ahead and check the link below. Um, but anyways, now back to John Hammond. John, so John, you started doing CTFs. You graduated with something. Uh, I don't know if you finished it or not. And then you kept hacking. Um, after that, what did your life look like? Did you start looking for a cybersecurity job immediately after the, the Coast Guard, or what, what did you do? Yeah, so this is where I'll get into a little bit of uh, career advice, if that's totally a okay. Um, because all throughout, we'll accept it. Yeah, all throughout this thing that I was doing, uh, undergrad and learning hacking and capture the flag, was this YouTube presence that I kind of had, uh, and I was trying to grow a cohort of peers at that university, at the college, to try and get better at cybersecurity. So I would make write-ups, and I would try to blog or write articles on all those war games and practice scenarios that I was going through. So I had a, a body of work to show on YouTube and all these things and in like kind of teaching my peers how to get into this, how to do cybersecurity, how to be a hacker. And when I was now out and about looking for a job, looking for a gig, looking for something to you know pay the bills, uh, I somehow got referred to a uh, training academy, like for learning and teaching cybersecurity. So I was chatting with them and they had kind of knew about, hey, what I could do because I was able to show them this body of work. I, I was able to show them everything that I'd done in the past and that kind of helped prove my merit and my competency. So they brought me on board as an instructor like as a, as a subject matter expert and I'm just a stupid kid right out of school. <laughs> and I don't, I don't, I don't know. It sounds so silly and it sounds so dumb. And I feel weird when I tell the story cause it's a little braggadocio, but like, Hey, your first role could be a teacher. You could be a senior pen tester. If you prove that effort and that merit and that competency. Now I, I hold a weird opinion about being a, like an expert and then being a teacher. And um, so I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm curious, do you think you were a better teacher because you didn't know everything? Yes. And this will be a breadcrumb if I'm willing to add it in is uh, there are no experts in cybersecurity. I'll, I'll never call myself an expert. I, I don't think. You, you can't. You can't be. There's you just made so everyone much... in the chat go, well, if he's an expert, then <laughs> what are we? <laughs> There's just so much out there, right? Like cryptocurrency, artificial intelligence, machine learning, binary stuff, low-level assembly and processors. I can't. I, I humanly can't. I don't know about you. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, I don't sleep. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's, it's hard. <laughs> so, okay. Um, you, you got this job instructing, which I, I think, goodness, I, I've said this before on my channel, the best way to learn anything is teaching it. <laughs> 100% it is. Because once you, you, you reading something, you can read it and passively understand it. But to have to take that hard concept and explain it simply to someone else, that's a whole different ball game. You have to know that thing inside and out. So that's it's the best way to learn. So to John's point about a career, and I, I know you're going there with, with this point, the best way to kind of start getting your career started is just to start documenting. Like you don't have to be a genius. You don't have to be the expert hacker, but just do one thing, make a blog post about what you're learning today. Yeah, sure. There might be 20,000 other people doing that same blog post. It doesn't matter. They're not going to put that on your resume, put that on your resume. And that's what people are going to see. You're the hiring managers are going to see when you put that in there. So anyways, I digress. Go ahead, John. What, what happened after that? Oh, geez. <laughs> We're still going. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, cause, like, Cause right now, I mean, you're, you're a young guy and I'd say like you're one of the most prominent people, at least I know about in the hacking space. You have this um, incredibly successful YouTube channel. You're doing all this crazy stuff. You have every certification under the sun. So I think I, I want to see how you got to where you are now and then also kind of get into the, the drive. How do you keep yourself um, inspired and up to date? And uh, yeah, yeah, go for that. I think that's enough. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> uh, thank you. And, I, and I, I really appreciate you. I don't know, just the interest. So thank you. Um, I can continue to tell the story and that'll get us closer to the answer to that question. Um, I was at that role uh, as a teacher with the Department of Defense Cyber Training Academy. So that was more in the government military space coming out of the Coast Guard. Uh, and that was fun and it was cool, but it was teaching. It was, hey, you're up on the podium for eight hours a day, 
trying to entertain students and keep them awake and, you know, make sure they still got a pulse because you're droning on in the lecture, right? So I felt like I was riding a unicycle and just trying to juggle to keep these folks with it. it wasn't always the most fun. So I thought, you know what, I still want to go do this stuff. I want to be a part of cybersecurity and be an operator. Go be that hacker. Go be that penetration tester. So I moved on to a different gig uh, with the Defense Threat Reduction Agency, which sounded so cool. It was like, <laughs> hey, we're going to go be hackers. We're going to do the spooky, squirrely, you know, high speed, low drag stuff. Let's go hack like nukes or stuff that's like, oh man, we, we got to have a high clearance or something shenanigans. You just got me demonetized, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're past 60 seconds. It's fine. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I'm teasing. So that was cool. I did that for a little bit, but it was kind of sitting around in a top secret space with no windows. But we didn't have authority. We weren't able to do much. So that was hard to, you know, live with. It's like, oh, I go to work, but I don't do anything there. So I didn't stay there for all that long. And I'll be completely honest. But the next opportunity that came about uh, was out of the government and military bubble. Uh, and it was uh, the role that I'm at right now. And I'm still there. And I'm going to stay here for a while because I gosh darn love it. Uh but it's, it's cybersecurity for the 99%. It's, it's cybersecurity for small to medium businesses or mid-market organizations that don't have a government or military budget. And they're getting hacked left and right. Uh, so it's weird when we say, hey, I want to get into penetration testing and I want to be an ethical hacker. Uh, think about the other side of that. The people that are getting hacked. How do they do their defense? How do they protect their own organizations and endpoints and security? So the stuff that you might learn, the stuff that I learned, that when you were trying to be more on the red team or act as the adversary, go be the hacker, that's all great knowledge to have. But I find a lot of fulfillment and a lot of meaning and that like, hey, we're going to go use that for good by protecting and building up organizations. So this is how you don't get hacked because all the techniques, all the exploits and all the, vil all the vulnerabilities that I would beat up, I can't beat them up anymore because I was able to use that knowledge to fix the problems rather than exploit them. It's such a weird duality and I love it. It's, that's the red team versus blue team. You hear purple team and all those shenanigans, but mm -hmm. it's so, it's so funny when people say, John, you're a hacker, you're a red teamer. I actually think I'm, I think I'm a blue teamer now. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you're purple in a way. I don't know. So, I mean, so you're, you're helping companies that I used to work for. Like, I, we didn't have dedicated security staff. I, got, I was the network engineer. I was the Windows admin. I was the help desk guy sometimes when they were at lunch. <laughs> and when, when it came down to a hack, like, I had to figure that junk out. <laughs> one <laughs> person they had, right? <laughs> yeah, like one of like two. And, and it was the worst. So, um, so you essentially help these companies out. Like, you, you, come in and like help them, I guess, do penetration tests and, and then build up their security in a way? So truthfully, my role is a lot of uh, incident response um, and managed threat detection. So when more managed threat detection than it is incident response, uh, we sort of just do that because it's fun. Uh, <laughs> when we see malware on an endpoint, when we see hacker activity, like, oh, there's, there's a backdoor or there's some persistent access with an implant or a hook on the computer, we'll notify that, that business and that organization and we'll help them get it out. So it's really cool and really interesting because it takes all the stuff that I learned in Capture the Flag and makes it more real world. And I hate, I hate that terminology when people talk about that because sure, CTF could be a game, it could be a puzzle or a toy, but you still learn real world things. And when you do it for a day job of, is this organization going to get hacked or not? And how can I prevent that? You see the techniques that you learn there. And it brings it to a whole nother level when you're talking about ransomware. You're talking about actual malware, actual denial of service attacks, actual website defacement, bots and remote access Trojans mining for cryptocurrency. Weird, weird stuff, right? And I think that's a cool bridge to cross. And I'm really happy with that. that. That's what motivates me now is I feel like I'm making a difference doing the cybersecurity stuff, both in educating people and bringing the right security stuff to the right people. 
That's amazing. So with um, with CTFs, I think it's a great example of like, okay, do you think CTFs prepared you for the job you have now? And and I, I, I'm assuming yes because you're here, um, and that's what you love doing. But was there a big learning curve going from the CTF mentality to doing what you do now? Oh, you asked two antithetical questions right beside each other. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, so, hack out of this one. <laughs> yes, I, I do feel the CTFs prepared me uh, for what I do and for everything that it kind of came along my way. Uh, and no, I didn't feel like I needed a whole lot else, which is weird because there's the conversation of, oh, are, are CTFs just a game? Are they not real world enough? There was a really good tweet, and I saw some folks uh, chatting about it in the in the live chat for the stream here. Ipsec, another creator, another great hacker, had tweeted yeah. and said out loud, out loud publicly, like, look, Capture the Flag is what got me my job. That's where it got me where I am today. Like, back in X, however, many years ago, I didn't know anything about cybersecurity. I didn't know anything about hacking or vulnerabilities or exploits or any of this stuff. Capture the flag is what got me there. When I took my offensive security certified professional, the OSCP that people, the certification that folks considered like the holy grail of the industry for some reason, they... Uh-oh. We'll, we'll, talk, about that. we'll talk about that here in a second. <laughs> I passed my OSCP because I played so many Capture the Flag events. Okay. okay. So yeah, we're, we're going to touch on that here in a bit. Um, so uh, first, this is probably the most important question we're going to ask you. Um, who do you like being compared to the most, Ed Sheeran or Seth Rogen? Because I've seen like <laughs> th at least 15 of those in the chat. I'm seeing Seth yeah. Rogen. So the Ed Sheeran makes more sense to me. I guess the Seth Rogen, I, I kind of see it, but not as much as the, as the Ed Sheeran. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I don't see the Ed Sheeran that much, but I definitely see really? Seth I, Rogen. No, I, I, it depends. I'm, I'm feel like when you when you're talking, and you're getting excited. Seth Rogen comes out. But <laughs> Seth Rogen comes out. Okay. When you're when you're just sitting there looking pretty, Ed Sheeran's there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, on to um, less important things. Um, th this is a question I get asked all the time, and I think I asked you this last time, but it's okay. New people, new new crowd. Totally. Someone coming in to like, I, I, there's so many people who watch my channel who are in this the stage. They hate their job. Maybe they're a plumber, maybe they're in sales, maybe they, they are a doctor, I don't know. They hate their job and they think cybersecurity looks incredible. What do they need to do like tonight to start taking those steps to become a hacker, for lack of a better term? Mm. So and, 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 and let's let's assume they were a nerd in high school and they know what a computer is. Maybe they built one. Maybe they have, let's, okay, they have a gaming computer that they built themselves. That's the starting the starting level of knowledge. What do they do? Uh, no pressure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like this is like the penultimate question. Um, create a virtual machine uh, and install Ubuntu Linux and create a try hack me account or hack the box account, connect to their VPN and get started on a room or a box or something to hack. Uh, keep Google open because you're gonna Google around a lot. Uh, and while you're at it, there's one article that I would recommend you read. There is a How to Become a Hacker by Eric S. Raymond. And I think that is a really, really good one uh, for getting your mentality right for what you're learning what you're studying what you're becoming it's genuinely an article on a blog post called how to become a hacker uh, and it has all the right stuff that's i think what got me off on the right foot oh fantastic austin remember that we're gonna put that in the show notes all right yeah <laughs> so okay th that's incredible advice first of all yeah I, I got a video on virtual machines if you guys are curious about how to do that <laughs> um but anyways beyond that uh so they start learning and they start going down that path um, what do you, I guess I kind of hit the wall too, where it's, it gets overwhelming at, at some point. Like you, yeah. the, the beginner labs are like, okay, nah, networking, cool. Linux, cool. I can get past that. But then you hit those like really, really hard things. Like, whoa, I wasn't ready for that. Like trying to jump into a hack the box room is like, ah, do you just brute force through it? Do you watch some Ipsex videos or do you just suggest going back to the basics? Ooh. This is a hot topic and this is where it shows how I'm, I'm a noob just as well. When you're learning, I don't think there is any shame in looking at the solutions. Like, 
if you're trying to ride a bike, you're not going to go without the training wheels on for the very first couple of runs, right? Like it's totally okay to peek at the solution to get past whatever wall or to see what new technology you just weren't even looking at because you didn't know was a, a thing. It didn't exist in your mind. So you weren't able to go enumerate or go find that or go learn something in that regard. Uh, if you're not like playing in a competition or something hardcore and intense right now, if you're just learning for the sake of learning, go check out Ipsec in his walkthrough video or go look at the blog posts and articles that someone already wrote a year ago when they worked through this box, this machine, or this task. I don't think there's a big issue in that because you're learning. Like you're trying to get better and one day, the next time you're playing this for a competition, for a tournament, or you're doing it for your real work and your job, you don't know that there is an answer out there. You don't know if this thing is vulnerable or not. Well, you've practiced, you've prepped, you've been, you've been worth the training wheels for so long that now you don't need them anymore. And I think that's my perspective. If you're banging your head against the wall, do it for a little bit, but not so much that you bog yourself down and want to give up, right? Excellent advice. And by the way, I love interviewing other YouTubers because when you're on, you're on. Like, I feel like I'm watching one of your videos. I'm like, yeah, yeah, continue. Can I pause this? Oh, wait, no, we're live. <laughs> so it's definitely fun. Um, where did my question I was going to ask you go? Hmm. Oh, that was what it was. Okay. So we talked a lot about CTFs and we talked about Hack the Box. If, if those of you who don't know what Hack the Box is, if you're watching, you don't know what Hack the Box is, it's basically they give you a computer or a room that you can, you're allowed to hack and it's designed to be hacked and you learn so much in the process. And some of them are like beginning, starting easy, right? They get crazy hard. And that's why we have people like Ipsec and other people in the community who, who do walkthroughs because they are hard and Ipsec's videos are long. <laughs> that's how hard they are. So um, that's a cool thing to do. And I love that about the hacking community. But now I want to talk about my personal favorite thing and that's certifications. <laughs> and I know this, this is so hotly debated in the community, but you have all of them. So where, where do you stand on certifications versus, I guess I, w I wouldn't say versus CTFs, but how do they weigh against each other? And do you still recommend people go for certifications? Uh, and let's say someone like me who's has an IT background, cloud networking. If I want to jump into ethical hacking, where do I start? Yeah, do you, do you, I understand there's, there's, there's a try hack me and all that that have fantastic um, uh, paths they draw out for you, which is amazing. But do we still need to go for those certifications that have a path as well, that give you a holistic learning opportunity? What do you say? So I think this is a question for yourself and what you want to do for your job or where you are in, in your career, right? Uh, if, if you're just getting started in the field and trying to find your footing with a new role or opportunity, your very first role or opportunity, having a certification will get your foot in the door hands down. Like th there's no arguing that in my mind, having that something on the, on the resume, just a checkbox, just a notch in the belt, just say, yep, I did it. That's great. Better question. When hacker one hires somebody, when you hire someone for your team, <laughs> do you care if they have a certification? Uh, oh, <laughs> some, some companies do, some companies <laughs> don't, you know, <laughs> uh, let's say, I was going for the first opportunity that I had in my career, the training academy one. You remember that one? I needed to have uh, Security Plus or they wouldn't hire me because they had okay. regulations, they had the standard, they had something that they needed to meet that I needed to be IAT level two, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I had six months as a grace period to go get that certification. And I understood and respected and realized that I needed to do that for the penetration testing company or the next gig that I was looking at to be a hacker and go do some of that spooky squirrely stuff. They wanted to see a lot more of those hardcore low level exploit work like OSCP and OSED and OSC and all those the company that I'm at right now, kind of startup -y, not under the same regulation necessities, we don't care what certifications you have. We just want to see your merit. It depends where you go and what you do. I will say that it helps you no matter what. Uh, the same way that going for a formal education helps you. It might not be the end-all be-all, but they do augment who you can present yourself as. Uh, do you need 
12? No. <laughs> I've probably gone way overboard. <laughs> okay, okay. And that was, that was a fantastic answer. Um, yeah. So for, let's assume that most of the jobs out there, and I, I don't know the ratio, but most of the jobs out there are more um, not, not um, startup style. And, they, and that's that's where most of the jobs are going to be is is bigger companies who maybe really do care about certifications from Security Plus, which you know is going to have that government regulation required situation, and then higher ones as well. Um, let's say someone that's that's their goal. They want to get that job, whether it's a red team penetration tester or they, they don't even care. They just want to be in cybersecurity. What would you recommend as their first certification? Now I asked you this last year. I remember we kicked around a few things, but things have changed. I'm, I'm assuming. So, or actually, it wasn't last year. It was 2020. My goodness, time flies. So, yeah. what would be, what should be Cameron? And, like, I don't. I still don't have a hacking certification. I'm lazy. So, I want to change that this year. What should be me and Cameron's first attempt at a certification? What should it be? We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna be your students right now. What should we do? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> And if I don't get that job, it's your fault. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a, a accurate and, and precise answer for you. It's okay. We'll wait for you. you can, you can Google <laughs> yeah, Google's always a yeah, right Google. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Google my answer real quick. What does the world think? Pretty. Yeah, uh, let's just look at the 2020 video. <laughs> and we, we can come back to it if you want. Yeah, yeah, if that's all right, I will let that simmer for just a little bit. And I, and I hope you'd realize, like, dude, John's not coming up with an answer because I'm genuinely trying to think of, like, what is the best thing that is so broadly applicable that it will fill that void for as much as possible? It, it's really tough. I see a lot of answers in the chat for EJPT. Um, so folks that don't know, yeah, EJPT was the eLearn Security Junior Penetration Tester. I'll just fill these gaps in, if that's okay. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe, and, and then this will be more helpful to answer your question, yeah. maybe snipe out the ones that you shouldn't get. <laughs> okay, shoot. I'm going to offend people. <laughs> it's a, you know what? We're, we're, we're way, way past that. Come on, let's uh, go. <laughs> yeah, John, you've already done the damage, right? Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't hold a lot of water to CEH. Um, I don't hold a lot of water to security plus Ooh. oh, oh shots uh -oh. Fired. that was the one right now i'm burned <laughs> cancel um, I, oscp has started to flip-flop oh oh no <laughs> ejpt is great but i think it's fallen away i don't even know there is the the pnpt right the the cyber mentor thing that's up and coming still gaining its ground is are did we run out like is the world i <laughs> am struggling to find another cert that we haven't mentioned <laughs> yeah so the answer is don't get one because they all suck <laughs> no so the sand stuff gcih that's a good one but it's a, like Those are expensive ungodly man. expensive yeah 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 we're gonna be here all night guys <laughs> you know what if you're game for it i don't know <laughs> i i just well I have this much coffee left, so uh, <laughs> that's how much time. That's your no, timer. Okay, so so um, EJPT, which is the one I've I've been eyeing because, like, I know last time we talked, it was it was good, and um, and eLearn was recently purchased by I and E, and um, it sounds like you know that that may have may have not been the best thing. I don't know. Um, so interesting. So EJPT is out. CEH, I already knew that. Security Plus, it's it's good for, I think, IT people and to check a box. Um, but then, yeah, uh, the Cyber Mentor stuff, I, I don't know anything about that one, really, but I know he's getting some traction in circles. So uh, if we forget uh, about the marketability of a cert, how's the knowledge in that one? Oh, for the PNPT? Yeah, yeah. And he, does he have a couple of those now, or is it just the PNPT? It's the only certification. Um, uh and oh, so I, I took PNPT. That is the last cert that I've achieved just very recently at the end of 2021. So just last month, I guess. Uh, and that cert focuses on Active Directory, but not Active Directory in that like, hey, you're taking advantage of forced trusts and uh, generic right, generic all right, DACL shenanigans for permissions and privileges. It, it showcases and harps on mistaken user education like bad passwords and password reuse and some of the shenanigans of hey if a domain controller trusts this device you could grab one ticket or another so it's taking advantage of natural windows 
kind of miscuration, misconfigurations and flaws uh, bundled with just human stupidity, which is a real vulnerability, right? That's, that's oh, the most yeah. real All day. Risk. I mean, yeah, if you were to go back to my previous company where I was the admin, they'd be riddled with those. Yeah, yep. so I totally understand that. And, and I, a lot of folks really, really like that. A lot of folks really enjoy that. Um, I think I, I see and hear one mantra of, hey, that exam isn't CTF-like as if CTF like is some blemish. I actually mm. haven't said this publicly yet, but I think it's a worthy, worthy thing to note. I think there is an element of it that is very CTF like in a weird way, uh, because it's something that you have to look for and you have to know that you're going to look for that. Uh, and then it leads you back down the track of, okay, bad passwords, etc. cetera. Uh, but it's really hard to, this is the, maybe the correct answer to the question that we keep getting closer to. It's really hard to find <laughs> training and education that fits what everyone wants and what feels like they need. When you keep trying to ask, hey, what's the best certification to get? There isn't one. And we, we literally just dragged ourselves through that epiphany. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so experimenting in everything that you can uh, exposing to so many different things and absorbing education like a sponge, maybe that's the best thing to do because maybe that's the best that we can do. Okay, so that's... Um, I wanted more than that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, no, 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 no I, I can't expect anything better than the right answer, and that is the right answer. You're, I mean, so let's maybe look at it from a different perspective. Knowledge-wise, is confusing. Um, yeah. now as far as marketability for the job market, what would be the best one? I mean, not, maybe not best, maybe what's the, like a few of them that would look really good on a resume that would help someone get a job. Like is it verifies an adequate number of skills that someone would feel comfortable hiring that person. So the easiest thing, uh, if they were doing just that HR bypass is gotta be security plus, uh, it's gotta be OSCP pen test plus is in there just as well. Uh, I think you could get by with CEH too, but those are the things that like, hey, cool, he's got the check mark, pass it on, uh, which is a good thing. That is necessary. That is needed. I'm not by any means bashing any of those. There's a time and place for each of those. Uh, CISP, CISSP, I see in the chat, very, very managerial. Uh, these are all great things and they all target one aspect of cybersecurity and none of us are to say, oh, that's the right way to do it. So yeah. crappy answer. Okay. <laughs> no, no, it's 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 good because it's the right answer, and yeah. I would hate you to like shill something because because you, you needed an answer. No, no, that's that's fine. Um. Use the discount code <laughs> that I have right here in the description of <laughs> Security I'm, Plus. I'm, it'll get you a job tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to design a path for me and Cameron right now, and it's going to be certifications. I, I feel like I have to go through the the fire of this. Um, tell me if it's stupid or not. I want to try the EJPT because I, I, I know it's one of the better ones. And I also want to get the Pentest Plus. I know they have kind of similar things they test on, but I want to see how they feel. And I know CompTIA, I think, just did a new Pentest Plus, if I remember correctly. So I want to try both of those. Um, and then I've always had my heart set on getting the OSCP. So is that stupid to go for those? So this is a different question. <laughs> is it stupid? <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to be a moron for doing that? Well, thank you, thank you for giving me that softball. I mean, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, based off all the other questions. No, 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 no. You, that is not stupid at all. And I actually really encourage you and would really be a proponent of that. Uh, so I know a good friend of mine that has been hard charging for the OSCP. That is all about it. Like they, they want to pass OSCP. Uh, and it's been a struggle point. So I feel like we're actually at a new vantage point, a new perspective. We're like, all right, okay, you know what? Let's hit EJPT first and then let's knock out OSCP. So, which is exactly like the path you just mentioned. I was like, that's, that's the mm. right way to do it. You know, that's really good. I feel Both validated. Of those are, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Both of those are hands-on certifications. Both of those get you on keyboard. Both of those showcase pivoting. Both of those showcase, hey, moving from one compromised computer to the next um, and lateral movement and post-exploitation to, you know, pillage the village, find some of the good juicy details and stuff that could be found on one compromised target. All of that uh, is, is good. 
I, I like seeing the chatter in the live stream chat right now. Some folks are saying, hey, uh, one is good, one is better. Go for the one that you're most interested in, but both of those are great options. So, and also, so what, what I'm hearing from you, so certifications are meh, but they're still good. But what I'm hearing the most, and this is like the, the, the sermon I, I feel you're preaching to us, is that CTFs and these things that cause you to go deeper and learn and challenge yourself are probably the best option. But I guess for me, where I struggle with that is it's so ambiguous. It's like, yeah. when do I get there? Because certification gives you that, oh, I've done something and now I can put it somewhere. CTFs are like, uh, where does it go on my resume? Are they going right. to care about that? I don't know if they're going to care about that. Was your, was your question there, <laughs> what do I do with this? Or was your question there, how do I know when I've made it? Yeah, how do I deal with the ambiguity of like just going down the million and five CTFs out there, going down the, being the top 1% in, in TriHackMe? Like, <laughs> where, where, where does the, where, where do I feel confident? Oh, you know, here, here's what I'm really asking. At what point do I feel confident enough to get that first cybersecurity job? Because for like, for I can tell someone in the system admin world, Go, try now. I don't care what you know. Just try to get a help desk job and just do that right now. Like, that's what you got to do. Like, that's the best thing for your career. Just get one. Tell them you 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 just turned on your computer yesterday. You bought one at Best Buy and you can get a job. Um, and then uh, system admin, just get your get your A plus, get your your CCNA, whatever. But keep applying for the next things. Keep building those skills. Never wait. What's that look like in cybersecurity realm? Oh, okay. This is awesome. So I have a lot of ideas. I have a lot of uh, <laughs> thoughts that are firing in my brain right now, and I want to make sure I can grab them all in time. Uh, you're, I, I think, going to both like and really dislike this answer. <laughs> oh, I'm ready. I'm, okay, I'm ready. I'm Before ready. I forget, I'm going to say that that philosophy of for applying for jobs and for doing things uh, is actually no different in that networking world and in that ethical hacking and cybersecurity world. Uh, and let me get to that answer. If you're doing capture the flag and you're doing war games, you're doing cyber ranges and you're going through all that and you still don't feel like, okay, what is this? What does this mean now? It's not a notch on the belt. I can't put it on my resume. You can add it to your blog. You can add it to your art, like library. You can add it to your GitHub. You can add it to your website, to your portfolio, to your YouTube channel. And that feels like a small breadcrumb, but those accumulate and those stockpile. And I wish I had something as cool like that. Like, sure, the YouTube thing, that's a thing. But if I had something in text, like if I had an actual blog that I could control F through and actually look through my notes and demonstrate and do what I did way back then, that is awesome. That is invaluable. Uh, and that is what you can show and give to employers. And you're gaining skills along the way while you do that. So when you say, how do I know when I'm ready to go apply to a job? I would actually default back to your same perspective and persona. Like, Start right now, apply, shotgun applications out and see what comes back to you. And I don't mean that in like a desperate way. I, I mean that in like a, you're looking for your first position and you need to know where does the market value you and what you can do and how. And this is a selfish John Hammond thing, <laughs> but... <laughs> Say you are selling t-shirts. You want to work with the individual that will buy your t-shirt for $1,000 rather than the person that will buy your t-shirt for $100. Uh, so once you get the job that you like and know, hey, I need a job, I'm going to take this job. I would still be looking. <laughs> like, I wouldn't stop because you know, hey, I can get that next cool thing that I'm super interested in and I love and I want to go after. Or like I can, I can make myself more marketable with these new skills, with these new certifications, with this new stuff. That is something that I, I, is fun when you enjoy it and you like it. And you, I, I think that is still something that's worth doing. It, but it is no different from that perspective, what you just told me of, hey, networking, CCNA, apply, keep growing, go to the next one. I think it's the same. Okay, okay, good to know. Good to know. I, I, I didn't know if it was very similar. And I have to be honest, the, the more I get into cybersecurity, there are stark differences between like what I'm used to in that realm to this. Like it's it's very competitive and sometimes a little mean. Um it's a different world, <laughs> I have to admit. And by the way, you're not mean. Like you're you're a positive 
speaking of light, Mr. John Hammond, I appreciate <laughs> you being here. Um, every time I see your YouTube video pop up, I'm excited. Like, oh, where are we going to break out of today? Kiosk mode. Here we go. Which, by the way, that was, that was a really fun video. Oh, and thank if, you. If you guys haven't watched John Hammond, go do it. He does all kinds of crazy things. Um, okay. Okay. So I think we, we found we, – we, we went the long way. But we found the answers to our questions, <laughs> and, and it was fun because we, we learned so much along the way. And um, I feel like people watching this probably got a really good grasp on what the what that looks like now to start your career or start the journey and to build those skills. We have, fan, like we have platforms out there now that just curate it so well. It's incredible to start just small and then go crazy. Um, now, I'm, I'm going to push you a little bit more, so let me know if it hurts. Uh, for Hacker One, and that's where you work again, right? Like that, I, I want to make sure I'm saying the right company. Like you're just saying you're working somewhere else. I, I work at a company called Huntress. Oh, Huntress! Um, I said Hacker One earlier. Okay, so my bad. Huntress Labs. That's what it is, right? Yep, that's my that's my love. Okay, <laughs> it's a so, great time working there. So, um, for a an entry level position, what would you what would that title be at your company? Ooh, so that would be uh, an analyst level one. So what's the job requirements on that? Uh, so that is problem solving and critical thinking. And I, I let's go find it. Let's go check out a job. <laughs> okay, now we're <laughs> on to some fun. Here we go. Go on a field trip. So I'm gonna try and squeeze some more coffee out of my mug here. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let me accidentally start like you know, I'm not, I'm not by any means using this as a sales pitch or just trying to cram product down people's throat. <laughs> no, no, not me. It's, I think you've built up an audience and, and you've built enough trust to where we're going to listen to whatever you say. Oh. Even if you are shilling something to us, it's okay. <laughs> we're going to, we're just going to accept the medicine. <laughs> Dang, they don't have a posting for it right now, which is such a bummer. Um, but so let me, let me. Let me get the idea across that it is not as uber leet cyber ninja warrior, like zero day hacker. It's not the Hollywood thing that you're thinking of in your head. Uh, and there are a lot of roles in cybersecurity. In fact, a lot of cybersecurity, not to say that's strictly for jobs or not, that is kind of what the world is. Like, I don't want you to think, oh, I have to get this certification or all these or do all this and then study all this. And those are great things to do and they help. That is what I can keep coming back to. But if you apply and you see what it is, it's it's still really approachable and it's something that you're going to have a lot of fun with and you're going to enjoy. Because there's a post, actually, there's a LinkedIn post that I'm trying to think back to from my coworker that is saying, I used to think in cybersecurity that I I wasn't good because I wasn't the best. Uh, and I want to keep reemphasizing, like, there are no experts. No one is the best. There isn't a best. We're all just in this on a team. We're all just here just to learn. And we're all just, we're here to make security better. Excellent. Excellent answer. Good. Can't argue with that. Yeah. Um, now, we're going to take a quick break here to answer some questions if you have the time, John. Absolutely, my friend. I'm all yours. All right, so um, Michaela, my other admin here, should have uh, curated some questions. Uh, go ahead and throw some up, up there for me, Austin. Michaela's going to send some our way. Right now it's blank. <laughs> Let's try again. Nothing yet. Cameron, you got any questions in there that we can kind of look at in the meantime? I saw one person had asked, I forgot their name, uh, but they were asking John about... Uh, imposter syndrome. Do you Ooh, do you get I that a that lot? One too. Oh my goodness! Yeah. And uh, how you. do you I, how do you deal with that? Being as high up on the totem pole as you are. Oh, I don't. <laughs> um, the, such a hard conversation to have, um, because there are a lot of people that do incredible work, right? Uh, Twitter and LinkedIn and social media spaces is for some reason a booming ecosystem for cybersecurity and cybersecurity professionals. Uh, but you'll see people dropping new tools or showcasing, oh, I got this like gajillion dollar bug bounty reward. Or yo, I just hacked this. I, I did this pen test in the coolest way possible. And 
sometimes you're like, I didn't do any of that. <laughs> and, and I get that feeling all the time. Um, I sometimes think that like, hey, the idea of imposter syndrome, no, it doesn't exist anymore. Get it out of my head. Imposter syndrome isn't even in my vocabulary. I'm just going to get back to work. I'm just going to go do what I always do. I'm just going to do stuff that I enjoy and I love. Um, and then you just kind of forget, it's, which is weird. You just kind of like, hey, I'm, I'm caught up in the grind of all the stuff that I've been doing. Uh, and I'm chipping away at my own cool tool or project. And I'm not even looking at all those things that make me feel like a small person. Uh, and when I can produce that blog post, when I can share this cool new thing in a video or something and give it to the rest of the world, then it feels good because I contributed. Uh, right. And that's, that's what really helps cure imposter syndrome for me is that like, I'll put something out there and if one person looks at it, that's good. <laughs> like that, that's the help. That's what I wanted. I don't care if it doesn't matter how many it's, if I helped one person, then I am not an imposter. I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm part of the community. It's good. Good yeah. answer. Good answer. Now I, I do want to, uh, we'll, we'll curate a few more questions here, but I, 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 it reminded me, I wanted to ask you this question. What's in the future for John Hammond? Cause like right now you're extremely happy at Hunter's labs and I know what it feels like to find a great job um, to, that you'll never want to leave, but your YouTube channel is going crazy. Um, oh. What's what's on the horizon? Because like I, it wasn't, I I, I went full time YouTube around four hundred thousand, yeah. and you're you're approaching that pretty quick. This is like super sweet having a have a live stream to hang out with you guys. So again, thank you, Chuck, for just kind of the interesting questions and like, hey, John, what are you, what are you up to? How's life, man? So thank you for asking. Um, yeah, it's no secret that I love what I'm doing right now. Um, and by the way, but, feel, feel no pressure to answer like no, no. the personal details of your life. I'm just like I'm poking <laughs> and prodding. If you're like, nah, I'm good, whatever. That's People fine. People in the audience don't know, but this is just a show for us to hang out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's us and our like thousand closest friends. Not a big deal. Yeah. Small party. So one day Huntress is going to IPO. Uh, one day Huntress is going to take the exit ramp. Um, and that'll be a a cool, cool thing, or maybe, Hey, now John can go bootstrap really doing what he does, uh, on his own and take it to the next level. Like, sure. YouTube is growing. YouTube's got some sponsorships. YouTube has some revenue. Um, and John hosts capture the flag, right? Like, yeah, John hosts a lot of training and competitions and events. And maybe we could bring that to the next level. Give that to more people. You got, you got to, you got to try hack me. You got to hack the box over here, but that's only a duo. Maybe a trio would be fun. Uh, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> uh, those are pie I'm, I'm in the sky. Early investor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Th that's way, way out in the future. I'm not tackling any of that right now. Uh, but there's a lot of success in bringing education to more folks. So like a, like a course, like a curriculum. Like you do that in a great formal presentation way. There's value that. in that. Uh, I I think once I can go full time which I know I want to, I will. And I'm really excited for that. Cause those are three different ventures. I think would be a lot of fun to, to keep going down that road on. And you're doing great stuff just as well. Like we got Cameron on board, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll see if that's great or not. Time will tell. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. He's great. <laughs> I wouldn't have brought him on if he wasn't great. Um, so uh, you made me think of another question. And by the way, thank you for um, walking over the coals there for a bit. Um, <laughs> you give me imposter syndrome. It's all your fault. Um, and I'm just kidding, by the way, but seriously, I bet you give a ton of people imposter syndrome because you, you manage an incredible workload. It seems like you're everywhere all at once, all the time. You, you, I'll see you within one week that you got, uh, you, you hosted three CTFs and then you passed two certifications. I'm like, how, how does this man do it? How, how do you do it? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> man, this I, is, I, this I, is, I, and I, and I guess really, I just want to know like at, at where you're at as a hacker. Yes. You never stop learning. But what is your regimen like? How do you, what do you do to never stop learning? I struggle, really... I, I struggle with that like crazy. Sorry, I'll stop interrupting you. <laughs> I struggle with that like crazy. Um, Cause this is where imposter syndrome and burnout and anxiety and dread all intersect. Uh, and I wrestle with that all the time. I don't, I, I try not to show it a lot, right? Cause you, you put on a public show, right? Um, mm. 
the hard answer, the real raw truth, you postpone sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not that you don't sleep it's just you do it later <laughs> there, there's there's a really pithy thing i heard at one point and a lot of creators might know and recognize this but it's like it's not about how hard you work until you're tired it's about how hard you work after you're tired um so i'll i, I work remotely for i work from home so i might sleep in until nine o'clock ten o'clock Maybe sometimes and that's late. Sometimes I'll try and get up uh, earlier than that. But if I want to be able to get stuff done, managing a day job, cool. Managing YouTube, cool. Managing CTFs, sweet. Sponsorships, other opportunities. Uh, if I realistically want to accomplish everything that I can, it's not humanly possible unless I go to bed it's two in the morning, three in the morning, four. Uh, mm. Postpone sleep. <laughs> so okay that's the secret guys um i was wondering um it's like i i hear that and i'm like i'm too old for that i can't i can't do it anymore i used to be able like like i used to be able, like oh yeah i'm gonna stay up and, until 3 a.m study get up at 6 and then go work out and then go to work i can't do that anymore um cameron can you do that like, you're you're a young whippersnapper how old are you now 24 24 so yeah yeah you, i can still do that you can still yeah <laughs> i can't i can't i it's absolutely well you right. gotta hurry but it's getting close to my bedtime <laughs> no, i'm just kidding Go ahead. i mean you are absolutely right uh i am extremely fortunate and like i'm not married yet i don't have kids yet i don't own a home yet i'm in an apartment like yes very very blessed very very fortunate that i can grind and do that as a stupid young kiddo and i can make mistakes super early on uh like we're doing uh I don't think, I don't, I don't know how it could get done if I were in your situation now, Chuck. And for that, I envy you. And for that, I, I have imposter syndrome from you, my friend. You're putting out incredible work, closing in on 2 million subscribers. Uh, we all have that person that we look up to. And, and how we can emulate it in one way or another, hey, that helps. That's the best thing I think we can try to do. Okay. And I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. And I think it, it is all about stages in life because, like, I know that there's someone who has the family, has the wife, has the house, um, has the spouse, whoever it is, and they are wanting to switch into cybersecurity and they see your hustle and they're like, man, I can never, ever do that. You're, I mean, you're, let's be honest, you're at the echelon, you're at the top. Not everyone has to be John Hammond, even if th that should be a t-shirt, you know? Um, <laughs> not everyone has to be that. They have to find their level of hustle and, and work within those confines. And I think they'll get there as long as they do just something every day. But yeah, I I miss the days of doing what you're doing. It, it was fun. Um, but yeah, I just, mm -mm. even now I'm thinking about my pillow and it sounds amazing. Um, but yeah, I don't have to hustle anymore. Cameron, <laughs> you got any more questions? I don't. I was trying to look for some. Some good ones went by, but. So if, if you got more, John, are, are we good on time or do you have to go? No, I, for real, I'm I'm all yours. I mean, from what I understood, we have it until at least 3 a.m., so we are <laughs> good to go. Um, so let's talk about the the latest vulnerability. There, there, I I intentionally did not look up anything on this. I, I stayed uh, just totally out of the loop. What's this new Linux vulnerability that everyone's talking about? Ooh, okay. So there, I, and I got to be honest, we've been what maybe a week dated on this, so we're already behind the ball. Uh, <laughs> Ooh. But no, I'm saying that in that I'm sure there's something cool, crazy, new, hot vulnerability. Everything's blown up. But the one that I was thinking of when we were kind of bantering back and forth, trying to think of, hey, what, what could we chat about on this podcast, on the live stream? Um, I had suggested, you know, the new Polkit vulnerability or Pwnkit as kind of as the new nickname and how it's been dubbed. It's uh, CVE 2021-40... Three four. Uh, you, you had that memorized. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> so just gracious. It's funny. Uh, it's a, it's a privilege escalation vulnerability on Linux systems. So privilege escalation means, hey, cool, you got this low privilege user Joe Schmo. Uh, if he types these silly things, suddenly he's the administrator. He's root. He's a super user. He can do whatever he wants. Um, I 
I had a lot of interest in this one because it's one of those crazy, hey, severity, crazy high or critical, uh, and it, it catches the eye of the security community and a lot of security researchers because this one was just so easy to pull off. Uh, Qualys was the organization that originally kind of disclosed this and, and, and put out a blog on it. Uh, and I can get nerdy. I can talk about it more. I can kind of zoom in on anything that you'd like or uh, – what would be best for you? What, what do you think we should chat about here? I think, uh, what do you think, Cameron? Getting nerdy? Get nerdy. Let's get nerdy. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> that felt wrong. Let's do that, though. So do you need me to, I, I don't think I'll be able to screen share or do any wacko demos. Actually, I might. Can We, we might it? be able to. Is that cool? Uh, yeah, yeah. If, if you, yeah, go for it. I think everyone will be okay with that. Are you guys okay with that? In the chat, let us know. So I, that I have so many questions around that, but yeah, just no, so first of all, yeah, taking a regular average user in Linux, which is no different from a user in Windows or Mac, it's just someone who logs in and can get to their My Documents folder and, and, and ping stuff. But getting escalation privileges beyond that to be able to change system things and break the world—that's that we put up some walls between that, right? You can't just do that easily until now. So I'm, <laughs> I'm curious how that looks, and and how do people even find this stuff? Who's doing this? <laughs> Who, who has the time? Oh, you know, John Hammond has the time. How do you find this, John? <laughs> uh, and no worries if the screen share doesn't work out. Yeah, we, we have an astounding amount of yeses, so I think. Oh, actually, yeah, worry then because uh, people want to see it. They're ready. <laughs> cool. So, uh, yeah, let's do some screen share. You guys will have to uh, let me make a fool of myself, though, if, real quick. Does this come across if I try and screen share? Uh, let me double check. So it did, but I have to make one change on my side to make the magic happen. Give me yep, one yep. second here. Just gonna change this and that. I think this is a good quick question to answer before we move into this. Uh, For someone sure. asked, John, what are some of the resources that you use on a daily basis to not get behind the ball on in information? Um, Twitter. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm half kidding. Uh, Bleeping computer, other great news uh, and references. Oh, by the um, way, your screen is live, just so you know, so we don't dox you. Thank you, thank you. No, <laughs> Hopefully, I'm not going to make him fool myself yet. So this is the original uh, Qualys uh, release on this utility. PK exec or Polkit is a set UID binary or program that will borrow administrator or root privileges at runtime. So I could be the poor, like, plebe John, but if I were to maybe use the sudo command, sure, I could become root, or I could use a set UID binary, which will momentarily let me become root for that program. Uh, you know, just about every major Linux distribution, kind of a big attack surface. Uh, so if we were to get really, really nerdy, uh, the gimmick here <laughs> is kind of how programs take in arguments. Like when you run something from the command line, uh, I'll try and scroll down here. It does weird shenanigans on how it might read in arguments, like the arg counter or th the words that you type in in the command line after running the program that you want to run. You've covered this in your Linux for Hackers course, uh, Network Chuck, so I, I, the audience might be kind of familiar with it. The gimmick the trick here, the, the magic trick is setting one of the arguments, the very, very first one to null because then it'll think, oh, that that string, that whole value and variable there has now been terminated. So it'll try and read on to the very, very next variable on the stack or how the memory is actually portrayed in a computer. So the very, very next one could be a different program that you wanted to execute. So you could do some spooky stuff by tricking PK exec, like that original program, that you aren't passing any parameters. You're giving it null, but then you're giving it a new program in argv v0 to run instead. We're just doing a little switcheroo, kind of a sleight of hand trick that we were able to pull off just because we knew the magic words. If how does that sound for a, a completely high level? <laughs> Explain like I'm five answer. <laughs> well, first of all, if you're if that's five, then I'm two. Um, <laughs> no, that that's deep stuff, and that's it's it's crazy 
that people can just like, and, and this is, is this unpatched on existing Linux distros, I'm assuming? Uh, it has been patched. So there is hope. The world is safe. As long as they <laughs> updated, right? So, yes. and, and that's, that's assuming people update. That's crazy. And, and it, was it pretty much all Linux distros affected? Just like Linux kernel level kind of thing? It's seen a lot more reports on people saying, hey, I see this replicated in Ubuntu or a Debian-based system, but stuff like Fedora or Red Hat, I, I didn't see as many, hey, I was able to privask or do it here. Uh, people are going to call me out because I said, John, what, you John, you said that you use Ubuntu. Why are you using Kali? Um, <laughs> I love seeing this, by the way. It's making me really excited. <laughs> so this was one of the original proof of concepts that was released right right out of the gate. Uh, this individual had put this out on the 25th of January. This is C code, so getting real, real nerdy, getting into the weeds here. Uh, I won't drag anyone through this, but the gimmick is if we had this C program and we tried to compile it, let's output it to a Blasty program. I am the silly user Kali, but let's pray to the demo gods for just a moment. <laughs> Running that program, I am now root. Snap. Wow. So the fun stuff with this, and if it's totally okay, I'll do one last talking point, is that like Please. this was cool and fancy, uh, but I was thinking, well, we wrote this in C. You know what would be whack is if we wrote this in like, bash like the linux scripting language like the regular shell language because then it, you don't have to compile anything for one thing and you might be able to do some other tricks like fool people when some folks might say oh if you want to install a tool you try and curl uh some website to the installer script and you pipe it into bash have you guys ever seen that that structure to install a tool oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so what if we weaponize this thing to be a simple bash script? Uh, forgive me for frantic screen changing. Let's go ahead and oh, run fine. that script weaponized to go be root. Spooky scary all on its own, but what if we were hosting this in a completely different place? Let's do a Python 3 server super quick. By the way, all of the stuff you're doing right now is like a video I made. No, like, I, was about to say, I, I made I, I made two videos covering these two things you just did. And it's really funny. <laughs> I, Anyways, I, I feel like I keep forgetting we're on a podcast. So, give me just one quick moment. We'll do one last magic trick. Say that the server, the malicious server hosting this evil payload, was this IP address: one nine two one six eight one 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 thirty. You were tricked and deceived, and you thought, oh, I'm going to install this cool tool, like installer.sh or something. Uh, instead, it was this PK exploit. Uh, and what did we call that? I forgot. This is, now you know it's a real video. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. People <laughs> thought we'd just start playing a video. Sense. No, this is real. Or we just baked that in to make it feel real. So... Let's say I had that server listening. I would try and curl this. I would pipe it to bash. You actually have to do some other shenanigans. I think it's like a curl, like tech s read in from this through bash or some shenanigans. Uh, I wish I'd be able to showcase that right away, but I have a screenshot on my Twitter. The gimmick is you would be downloading this and then it would execute right through that curl command. Uh, I don't know if anyone in the chat wants to save me, but it's some curl uh, redirecting it through bash redirecting through something to be able to get the pipe right into running code right on your system as if you were just running it right away so far no answers so i think um you're still the top dog <laughs> <laughs> no imposter syndrome today <laughs> well hey sorry thanks for letting me nerd out guys i know i completely derailed our live stream <laughs> no, no no that's what the live stream is no we we're right on track john hammond <laughs> let me uh, change you back to your 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 face i think Yes, you're back on. Just your face. Cool. All right. No, seriously, thank you so much for doing that. And mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, okay, I need help. How do you just live do that? And, and I assume this is how you record your videos. You can ask Cameron. Mm -hmm. When I record my videos, I'm like, okay, this time we're going to do this. No. Now we're going to – no, 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 no. no. And I, I just I, – I do like 15 takes for every single jot and tittle. Ask Austin. He edits them. It drives him crazy. <laughs> do, do, are you like the one-take man wonder? 
no. Uh, and I'll be completely honest. I'm actually, I feel like I used to be, and I feel like I like got rusty and I'm out of practice because I would be able to do like a live demo, tip tapping away, talking and streaming it all out, spewing the same thoughts as I'm thinking them in my head. Uh, and for some reason, apparently people found that entertaining. Uh, but in some of my recent videos, like the Log4j one or some of even the kiosk breakout, I had to like, whoa, completely lost my train of thought. Let me cut, edit this out, and I'll do like 15 takes just like you. Um, not a bad okay. thing. Ooh, okay. it, it still yeah. really helps <laughs> because you get the right sound bites that you wanted there. But I... I I wish I could always be in that zone to like, hey, here's a full on demo, me explaining it as I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah, like sometimes I get in that zone, but man, does it come. I, 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 and it's definitely sometimes. Yeah, it's rare. Um, maybe like when I'm teaching through a course and I'm like on episode three, I'm like, okay, we're, I'm rolling now. But yeah, most of the time it's like, okay, I just studied up on this. And now I'm like, okay, what, what am I supposed to say here again? Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay, we're back on track here. So, but again, what you just did here was witchcraft and I appreciate that. Just going through that demo, impressive. I would never attempt that. Yeah, like we were saying, it was like we weren't even watching. Yeah. You know, it was wrong, like we're yeah, doing a podcast right now. Well, anyways, Mr. John Hammond, we've kept you long enough. My wife told me that Chick-fil-A was here 10 minutes ago, so I've got to go. <laughs> um, that's obviously the important thing. Real quick, um, first of all, thank you for coming on. And if anyone has not followed you, I know you're super active on Twitter. It's like at underscore John Hammond. And then YouTube, we linked it in the description. So everyone, go follow John Hammond. Subscribe to John Hammond. Um, any other place that we should find you? Uh, no, that's about it. Twitter, YouTube, um, LinkedIn, if you would like. I have a Discord server, but I mean, you can track that all down through the channel. Uh, I'm super duper grateful for uh, you guys letting me hang out with you. Uh, I'd love to soak in and hey, I know you're cruising to that 2 million. I'd love to get some, hey, some some love over back on the John Hammond side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see those numbers climb. We all rise together here. So um, yeah, man. So thanks again. And just one last question, or I guess, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a question. Any any parting advice for me and Cameron? One thing we can take and chew on and go forth with as we start our, our non-noob hacking journey. <laughs> again, do the stuff question. that's fun. Do, oh, do the stuff oh, that's okay. fun. Do the stuff that's fun. The stuff you love, stuff you enjoy. What if, I guess if it's not fun, it means you don't like it. That's probably it, yeah. Interesting. Good point, Cameron. So if it's not fun, you don't like it. Now, so at what point do you have to push through when it's not fun to find the fun? Mm, <laughs> I'd argue that you don't, you know? I don't know. You can always gamify it. And I like it kind of, hey, if we're taking this thing full circle, you mentioned that with hacking. Everything feels like it's a, it's a fun game. You can gamify it in one way or another. Um, so I think that would be the breadcrumb that I'd leave you is like, you know, let's make it fun. If it's not, let's find one way to spin this on its head or tinker with it one way or the other. And that's the best way to do it. So, Okay. That's awesome. Good. Well, thanks again for coming on, John. Um, thanks again, guys, for tuning in today for the first episode of Noobs. Um, is that what we're calling it? Yeah, that's yeah, what we're calling noobs. it. Um, I was the get first you. guest. Wow. You were the first guest. first guest. I mean, yeah. What an honor, yeah. guys. I didn't want to say that, but it's a pretty big deal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, we'll see. We'll see. Time will tell. Um, we will have the full edited version on the secondary YouTube channel, or you can check out the uh, Spotify podcast, and it should be on Apple too. So pretty much anywhere you can listen, you can listen to it. Um, yeah, that's all we got. We're going to stop rambling because I got Chick-fil-A waiting for me. Um, Austin, go ahead and hit the outro, and we'll catch you guys next time. See you later, guys.